Hello again YouTube. Odd question for you today. If you're a journeyman pro on the European tour and you regularly finish in a hundredth or hundred and tenth place on the money list, what do you think one and a half shots per round is worth to you? So I'm going to look at that today. I'm going to let the other guy explain it to you while I play a couple of holes and then the camera will come out as and when needed because I want to play quickly today. Don't let this sun fool you. There's a very cold east wind blowing and I don't want to be hanging around uh, strolling when I can be walking briskly and keeping warm. First hole's clear, let's get cracking. If you follow golf on TV you will be aware but Richard Bland has very recently won his first tournament after about 450 attempts he's knocking on the door of the seniors tour he's outdriven by 50 to 70 yards by the young men on tour these days and he was asked in an interview how he did it mm, that's a little fat and he said he did it with his wedge and all his other wedges just by hitting it closer to the hole by spending his practice time wedging it. So how does that apply to us? Well for Richard Bland to drop one and a half shots he hit thousands of balls and we don't have time for thousands of balls but we do have time for a few and if you change your practice routine to hitting your wedges straighter and the correct distance you'll drop your handicap in fact this is the fastest way to drop your handicap and the higher your handicap the more shots you can drop you know I've played with high handicappers who from 100 yards with a pitching wedge regularly take four or even five shots to get in the hole and yet they're on the driving range banging driver so what are you going to practice? okay so now you know what the gist of the video is about it's about a, your pitching wedge and in you know 130 yards if you're a big hitter, maybe 110 yards, if you're Mr. Average like me. Now you saw how I tried desperately to throw away my par on that first hole, but managed to save it. Just, just managed to save it. So until I get into a situation now, the camera's going in the bag, and uh, I'm going to stride out a bit and keep warm. Well, no short game video is complete without a bit of lagging. So it's 42 feet back up the hill and into the breeze. My key to lagging is always to borrow a little bit more. That way the ball tends to stop by the hole rather than slithering away four or five feet giving you the opportunity to miss that. Now this is a green light flag. It's very very friendly but the ball's below my feet and it's on a downslope. So I've got to take extra special care here. My usual thought when the ball's below my feet is stand still. Try and keep the lower body quiet. And then occasionally yes. you do that. Now on five I hit the perfect drive and then I fatted my six iron. There's no direct route to this flag. I've got to land on the shoulder of the bunker. So I'm taking the sand wedge with an open face just to make sure that the ball goes to the right. Almost hold it. And it released all the way down to here. Never take these little ones for granted. Get your par. This flag is smelly, so we leave it alone. All I want to do is hit this wedge 
into the middle of the green. Now I tug it a yard or two. If I'd taken on that flag, as you can see, and pushed it a yard or two, I'm in the bunker, I'm short-sided, I'm buggered. So it's much better to have this slightly longer putt than it is to be in bother. Now this is what wedge plays about. Picking the right moment to go for it, and picking the right moment to play to the fat of the green and get your two putt. And here's another one, a back left flag into the breeze. It's smelly, it's leave it alone. Now there was no space for the camera. The ball was on one side, the flag was on the other. So there's no putting in this one. Number nine. Middle of the green again. I'd just been called through and I rushed a bit. So instead of hitting this down the banner, I've hit it out to the right side of the green. But to show what the wind is doing, how strong that north wind is, I drove that 281 yards which really I shouldn't be able to do in the winter. And you see there, I didn't borrow enough, so it slithered away rather than stopping by the hole. And just to show what can go wrong if you take on a flag, this flag's back right. What I should be doing is playing short of it, but I thought I'm going to have a go at this just for the sake of the video. I did make it on the green, but this putt is horrible. So it wasn't a green light flag, it was a flag to leave alone, it was a flag to be short of. And look at that go. So when you are hitting wedges into the greens, you need to be looking at where are the slopes, what do I need to avoid, where's my uphill putt? And you'll certainly dr start dropping shots if you think in those terms. Now this is a place where the two handicap golfer turns three shots into two. The green slopes heavily left to right. It's very difficult to judge how hard to hit that. And it's gone up the bank and it's died. And it's died about 12 feet short. So that's where the, the professional golfer and the low handicapper has an advantage over us. And because the putt is severe, all I could do was dribble it. Now I've driven in the bunker on 13. The flag is on the right, it is in a miserable position. Our priority here is get the ball out. Even if I was two shots into this bunker, is get the ball out. Now as it happens, I've got a birdie putt. But if this had been an ordinary par four, this would be a par putt. Well, here we are at the end of the video. No video I ever make goes to plan. I was expecting to be doing a lot of chipping today. When in fact I've, I've hit a lot of fairways and I've hit a lot of greens, so chipping's been virtually non-existent. But I hope you get the idea that uh, someone who's down at two handicap range, they're looking to improve by that one shot, or perhaps two. If you're a 28 handicap, believe me, you can improve by an absolute bundle, six, seven or eight shots, just by hitting greens with your pitching wedge, and by chipping, and by putting. The higher your handicap, the faster you can bring it down. There's so much room for improvement. And for myself, I might be able to improve by one shot, get down to five. Because I'm always gonna have some long game issues, which means I'm gonna be making bogeys, no matter how hard I try, and how much I practice. But if I can get one shot off, be a solid five handicap, I'll be the happiest man on this planet. This northeasterly wind has chilled me to the bone. As I've been going round, it's been getting a little bit worse and worse and worse because I'm getting stiff and I'm not turning very well. 
So I've skipped 15 and 16, coming on to 17, and we're on our way home. Ta-ra!